Hi, I'm Phil and I'm trying to improve my Brompton. I've cycled about 10,000 miles on my current Brompton. I've lugged it on trains and boats all around the country and I'd like to make it a little bit lighter. I'd like to try and improve the brakes and try and get the gears working a bit differently as well. I'm going to make a few videos as I go along so that you can see what I've done and in case I help anybody else. And if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them in the comments. And the thing I'm doing today is the first step, which is to build my own back wheel. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because I couldn't find anything on YouTube on how to do it with one of these Alpine hubs. So that's what we're going to do today, and hopefully this will be of use to anybody else who wants to give this a go. So what I have got is I've got a sun rim, I've got an Alpine hub. I've got a whole load of spokes uh, at 130 millimeters. I've got some synthetic grease in a top. Uh, I've got an electric screwdriver, and most of all, I've got Sheldon Brown's amazing work on how to build your own wheels. I've never built a wheel before, but this is what we're gonna uh, start with today. Uh, the only reason that I get a bit of extra help is that he says something like, of course, if you wanna do a one cross pattern, which is what we need to do, just work out the maths from there, and I couldn't work it out at all. So I'm gonna try and do it now, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, show you how it goes. So we start with the key spoke, which goes in over the logo, and is gonna go in next to the hole for the valve. Now I do have an electric screwdriver with me, but I'm going to try and do most of these just by hand to begin with because I think that'll be a bit faster as we do the first lacing. So with each spoke by the way I'm dipping it into the grease as recommended. And I think I'm still, even though we're doing a one cross pattern, going to be doing three holes. So spoke one, three gaps and then spoke two go through the fourth hole and at the hub end you're missing out every other spoke every other hole Okay, and there are eight spokes in each set. And this is the last of the first set. And if I've done my maths right, there's going to be three holes between this last spoke and up. And that is the first set of spokes for this hub. So now we're going to turn it over and we're going to do the same with the, uh, the trailing spokes on the other side. So we start again with this. So I'm just following the instructions there from Sheldon. The first spoke on the back side is one to the left of the first spoke you put in, the key spoke, and it goes into the hole which is to the left as well. That's the, the first spoke you put in. So that amazingly is the first 16 spoke stuff already. 
fair amount of uh, smoke there, but that's okay. We're going to move that forward. Watch the leading spokes. This is the third step. So again, consulting shell guns may work. says we're going to start literally anywhere but we'll start again at the keystroke just for my insanity we'll put this one through from underneath this time rather than from the front Explain what I'm doing in a second, it's just quite fiddly this bit. Okay, things which might have been obvious to you but weren't obvious to me is that it's only going to work one way, okay? So, you, as you put your, your spoke in, you put it from underneath, it's going to go to the left over the, st the spoke which is there, uh, and it's going to go one, you've got a spare hole between the two, and then it's going to go into that one there. So, this is where you put it to the left, miss a hole and put it in, that's the only way it's going to work, it's not going to reach any further. That may have been terribly obvious to you wheel builders, but it wasn't to me. And that means that there is no gap left between the uh, spoke you've just put in. There are no holes left at the rim after you've put this one in between that and uh, a spoke coming from the other side. That is all of the spokes on this side filled in. You can see there's no holes left in the hub. And they're all filled in there, so I've just got to do the last of the leading spokes on this side. And then we're going to have a wheel, albeit one that needs a whole lot of trim. Delay there while I try to work out what's going on because this is a second hand hub and whoever has done it before has not laced their wheel the same way that Sheldon recommends. But I think I'm back to where I was before. I'm doing the last of these uh, leading spokes on the, uh, the brake side, this hub, hub braking, and that's going to go over to the right and into the last remaining hole. So you can see there's the first of my. Last of the spokes, it's now crossing a single one with the trading spokes from that side. Okay, onwards. So, unfortunately, 
Having listed it all last week and been very proud of myself, I made a terrible mistake, which is that when you try and put the inner tube in, my track pump doesn't fit in in such a way that I can inflate the tyre because of how I've laced it. So I've just spent a good 10 minutes relacing the freewheel side, sorry, the, um, the non-drive side. And now, as long as I only want to inflate it this side, my track pump's gonna fit in. I can push it on. It's a very big hump, so you don't get much space, but you can successfully inflate the inner tube. So now I've just got to go and relace the non-drive side, and I'll have a working with I wanted to be able to inflate my tyre from either angle, so I have just relaced the entire wheel. This is the last spoke going in now, and in a second I will show you with a bit of luck that I have got enough space there we are, it's running, to inflate the tyre from both from the drive side and the non-drive side. So here's the last one which is going to be done up. And you will see that the hole is there. If I'm coming from this side, I've got a nice space there to do it. If I'm coming from this side, I've got a nice space there to put my pump. So how much weight have I managed to take off my Brompton due to all that work? Well, the original wheel was uh, one, two, three, five grams. You can see an old version I've got here. Uh, that's the three speed uh, Brompton wide ratio hub with two derailleur gears, bringing it up to a total of six gears. So the new wheel, which I built, where all the gears are internal and you can see a single sprocket on the outside. Alas, it is two, two, nine, four grams, which is actually an increase of one, zero, five, nine grams but dear youtube i've got some thoughts on how i can get rid of some of that weight they'll be coming up in the next video in the meantime if you've got any questions do put them in the comments and i will try and help thanks